Hello everyone, my name is Rajan Singh and today I am going to compare an MBA from one of the top IIMs with an MBA from a top US business school. I have studied at Wharton Business School in the US, so I have some familiarity with the American education system, especially the MBA programs in the US. While I have not been to an IIM, I have studied at an IIT, so I also have some familiarity with the way education the way it runs in India, all right? So I'll make a comparison and specifically I'll compare them, I'll compare them on six different points. Number one is the student body, second is faculty, third is the curriculum, fourth is the network, fifth is the brand, and sixth, of course, which you probably want to hear about, which is jobs and salaries, all right? So let's do that, we'll go through this one by one, and then I will try to help you decide for yourself in case you're trying to make that choice, is that for yourself, which is the right option for you? Because that answer can be different for different people. All right, let's start. So let's first talk about the student body. Now, I went to Wharton and we had 800 students uh, in our MBA class. It was a very large MBA program. And there were people from dozens of countries. Honestly, it sometimes felt, felt like you are in the United Nations. Almost every country on the planet would be represented. In fact, out of those um, 800 people, at least 130 plus would be either Indian or Indian origin folks. A lot of people from China and from, from various other countries. So it was a very, very diverse, very heterogeneous population. Second thing is, most people, they come after meaningful amount of, after having gained a lot of work experience. So at least two to three years experience folks would have, and many would have experience up to six, eight, even 10 years. So you get a class of people, which is, so folks are very diverse. They come from all kinds of different industries, different geographies, you name it, different functions. As a result, when you have a discussion in the class, quite often, whatever, whatever case study you're discussing, it could be business, marketing, uh, finance, it doesn't matter. What are you discussing? Chances are there'll be somebody who has some familiarity who has maybe worked in the same industry. So, so the discussions and the experience Experience sharing is a lot richer. In India, the folks who, whom you'd find in a, let's say in an IM, smartness wise, I think they'll be top notch. There'll be, in my opinion, there'll be absolutely no difference between the level of sheer intelligence between a typical IM graduate and somebody who went to a Wharton or Chicago or Harvard or Stanford. I think they'll stack up neck to neck. But quite often, except for ISB, ISB takes more experienced folks. Uh, other IMs you'll find students would have less experience and also more homogeneity. So many would come from tech industry, again, not all of them obviously, but I would say whether it is, whether it is geographical uh, diversity, whether it is diversity in terms of work experience, it is much less so. But intelligence IQ wise, I think it's exactly the same. So the richness would be a little bit compromised, but there are, there's always a trade-off. You'd find maybe a little bit younger populations, there'll be, there might be some advantages, I'm not sure. But this is, this is like one big thing that you want to keep in mind because ultimately an MBA for two years, it's also about the experience. It's about spending time with people around you. And therefore, this is something that you want to keep in mind. All right. So we talked about people from the student's point of view. Let's not talk about people from the other side, faculty members. When I went to Wharton, I'll be honest, I was very, very pleasantly surprised. I had studied, studied at IIT Kanpur and IIT Kanpur in my days, they had some really good faculty members, but I'll be candid. It was not uniform. There was a lot of variance. There were some guys who were really good, some guys not so much and some really, really bad. So it was a mix, mixed experience. At Wharton, surprisingly, to my, to my utter surprise, I found that the quality was amazing. I would say 80% faculty members, even the ones who were not supposed to be like very highly rated or very popular, I found the teaching was outstanding. So this was one big difference. Now in IIMs, again, I have not been to an IIM, so I should not comment about something I do not know. And what I've heard is like in IMA or even in IIM Bangalore and other top IIMs, there are some faculty members who are very, very well known. They are amazing teachers, but if, but from my IIT experience, I found more variability. I'm not sure if it is true in the IIMs. Like I said, since I don't know, I cannot comment, but I can certainly say in the US, 
at least in top business schools, it is very, very good, exceptional, all right? So this is about faculty members. Now, even if you look at the academic qualifications, uh, all the folks in the US uh, business schools, all the professors, they would have PhDs from the world's top universities. In India, yes, to some extent, but also they would be, uh, probably many of them would have PhDs from other places as well, not necessarily top US business schools. I'm not saying it makes them any less, remember, degree and school is it's not the sole determinant, but certainly it can be a small factor. Just keep that in mind, all right? So this is about the faculty. Now, let's talk about network. In fact, if you go to a US, in fact, I would say any business school, they will keep hammering you that MBA is about the network that you that you get out of it. So we cannot not talk about the network. Um, now in the US, uh, at least a school like Wharton, two things are there. One is the class size is huge. So we have we had 800 people. I believe Harvard has even larger, like 900. And 800 is not for top business schools in the US. It's not an unusual number. So which means if every year you are producing that many MBA graduates, over the years, you will have a very large alumni base. And second thing is you will have an alumni base practically anywhere you want on the planet. So if you, let's say, if I, for whatever reason, not that I want to, but if I wanted a job, let's say in Brazil, I'm very certain, absolutely certain in whichever companies or industries I'm looking at, I can find people from Wharton, I can reach out to them, I can set up a call, maybe get them to, uh, to forward my resume to somebody. So you get this global network. In fact, when I graduated at that time, Wharton's network was, I think, about 80,000 80, people because Wharton also has an undergraduate program. Maybe now it's bigger. So you get a massive and global network, and this is very, very powerful. It's like you don't need it every day, but someday when you need it, it can be very, very helpful. Now in India, the thing is, within India, you will have a very strong network if you're from an IM. So as an example, if you look at the leadership in the Indian uh, Indian businesses, I am a especially Ahmedabad, but even IMB, IMC, etc., IML. Many IMs you'll find like very heavy representation, especially IMA. A lot of top leadership has come from Ahmedabad. So within India, you certainly have that that network, but outside India, it will start getting very very patchy. So mostly India. All right, but very pretty strong in India. So that's the comparison. On the other hand, if you are, so for me as an example, since I went to Wharton, uh, in India, I would not have, I, I, obviously there are Wharton folks, but it's not as, the community is not as big as an IM alumni base. All right, so that's something, something to keep in mind. All right, so now let's talk about the brand, just the perception and, and the benefits that come from it. Now, naturally, US business schools, the brand and just the perception, it's very, very strong people recognize instantly. So if you went to say Harvard or Stanford or Chicago or Columbia, any or MIT or Wharton, any of these big schools, say the name, the name has got instant recognition. Um, whether it gives you common set benefit that you can that you can debate, I'm sure it will. We talk about network, but also you, you might just feel good. I don't know if it's, if it's a thing or not, but if you like having a name which people recognize, then certainly US business schools, they have a wonderful name. Now in India, I am also, they have a very strong brand, all right? So don't get me wrong, it's also there, but I would say if you come, if you make an apples to apples comparison, I would certainly say, even in India, having a top US business school background is going to give you certainly some advantage in terms of brand, all right? What next? Now, let's talk about jobs and salaries. Uh, let's see, so where do we start? Um, first thing is, if you look at the uh, look at the Indian the, the job scenario in top IMs or even XLRI or, or FMS and schools like that, um, the jobs would be mostly in Indian companies and salaries would be in Indian rupees. So it necessarily brings some kind of constraints. So you will. So again, I'm not a big I'm not an expert in this area. So I've not gone and done a thorough review of what kind of what kind of jobs people get and what salaries. But roughly, I would say 30 35 lakhs is not an unusual salary, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good salary, but many people would get, some people would get less obviously. So 20 to 30, 30 lakhs, 35 lakhs, that's a, it's a range. It's, it's a, it'd be, it'll be a very good salary in India. In the US, if you just take, let's say, a consulting firm like McKinsey or any top consulting firm, today if you get a job in the US, fresh out of MBA, 
uh, you would get a salary of about $200,000. Now, if you translate that into Indian rupees, multiply by currency, one Indian rupees, 75, uh, sorry, one, one dollar is 75 rupees approximately. So $200,000 would be about one and a half crores. Now, it seems like a lot of money, oh my God. But the fact is, remember, um, the cost of living also is, is quite high. So it's not exactly equal to one and a half crores, but if you were to bring that $200,000 to India and convert, you would actually get one and a half crores. So it is, it is I would say, a lot of money. In India, a, a similar, let's say you become an associate in a consulting firm in the US versus the same firm in India, the salary would be, I'm guessing about maybe one third to one fourth, somewhere in that range. So it will not be, it'll not be as high, but remember, there is a purchasing power parity concept, which means even though one dollar is say 75 rupees, in terms of what a dollar will actually buy, buy you if you're living in India versus living in the US, it probably is not 75, it'll be more like maybe 25 or 22 or some number like that. We don't know exactly, it depends, it, it varies a lot, it depends upon what kind of life you lead, where you are living, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So salaries in the US, uh, US dollar salary, so it looks very good. In fact, it is very, very comfortable, no question about it. In India also salaries are good, but they would be one third to one fourth if you just were to compare them by converting the currency into the, uh, the USD into INR, all right? Like I said, this is a very general observation. So don't take it, don't take it too, too literally. It's not like every person will get the same levels. In fact, some people will have higher salaries, some will have lower salaries. So when I said 20 to 30, 35, I'm taking, I guess, I'm not sure, I'm taking maybe slightly higher range the actual salaries might have a little bit more variability, all right? Uh, so this is about salary. Finally, let's talk about curriculum, which I think is also very, very critical. Um, I enjoyed the US MBA curriculum a lot. Now, here is why. For the first time in my life, I found in the US MBA program, whatever you are learning and what you're seeing in the real world, they are exactly, they're exactly the same. Normally what happens in, in business schools, for that matter, in any kind of schooling system, you would say, oh, this is what we study in class, but the real world is different. In the US MBA, that's not the case. Why? Because first of all, the curriculum, it's not like it was designed 10 years earlier. So you're, you're learning and you're discussing and reading about stuff which has happened maybe two years ago, one year ago, maybe like a couple of years ago. So it's very, very recent stuff. In finance classes, you'll be discussing stuff which may have happened literally yesterday. So it is very, curriculum is very, very fresh. And the US, in some sense, US economy itself is like a lab. It allows you to do anything. So if you go to Wall Street, the kind of financial instruments they trade, it's crazy. So there's, there's no restriction. You can do whatever you want. So you get to see, whatever you study in class, you get to see it outside immediately. And therefore, the, you're able to connect the learning with the real world very, very, in a very tangible manner. That I found was, just amazing, just to make it very, give a specific example, let's say you're talking about, uh, let's say price differentiation. So, so there's one idea, which is that in India, every product has a price, MRP. In the US, there's no price. You can charge whatever you want. So you'll find the same product, maybe it could be a bottle of jam or, or a cream or something. In one shop, it'll cost $4, and some other shop, it may cost like $6. It doesn't matter. You can charge whatever you want. So now you have the flexibility of to, to price it differently. And therefore, now that can be a case study which you can study in the class. In India, those kind of, there'll be a lot of restrictions. So you'll probably not be, not be experiencing some of those things. And also remember the case studies you have, a lot of case studies, they would come from schools like Harvard, which, is, which are case study focused. So those case studies would talk about case studies from the US, from Europe, and in Indian uh, in the Indian context, it would not be that relevant. So I'm guessing, again, I could be a little bit off here. I'm guessing that the way the curriculum in the class relates to the outside world would be stronger in the US business school, less so in the Indian business school, all right? So this is, this is sort of the comparison across six points that I wanted to put before you. And now, of course, the question is, okay, all this is good, good, but now, what, if I had to choose or if I have to advise somebody to choose one business school and they have both options, which one should we go for? Now, here's what I have to say. In terms of the cost of the education, uh, of the whole two-year MBA education, the cost in the US is substantially higher. So if you get an MBA from Wharton or any, any top school, I'm guessing even 
school further down the ranking uh, list as well, it would easily cost you upwards of two hundred to twenty to thirty thousand dollars. So if you're spending even two hundred thousand dollars, it'll be it'll be a little bit more. But let's say two hundred thousand dollars, that again comes to about one and a half crores. Whereas if you get an MBA from an IM, you can or an ISP, you can get for something. You can get an MBA for maybe one fourth or maybe less lesser cost. So the question is, should you pay four times or five times more? And it's remember, it's not 20% more, it's not 30% more, it's, it's four times more, five times more. So if the cost had not been that different, the cost has been comparable, I would have said almost point blank for almost everybody, a US business school would be a better option if you had that option. But since the cost is that different, we have to factor that in. So here, in fact, one more fact, fact I want to share with you. I found in my MBA class that many, some of my friends, especially from India, they already had an MBA, including MBA from IIMs, and they came to US for a second MBA. So second MBA at a top US business school, it's a relatively common thing, at least for the Indian MBA applicants. It's not an unusual thing. So people, so why would somebody from an IIM do a second MBA? Once again, because the, the, the perceived value is substantially higher, all right? So, so if the cost was same, US MBA, but cost is not same, so then what? So back to square one. So I would give you two, two things to think about. Number one is whether you want to work in the US or in India. Now, if you work in the US, let's say you join a consulting firm, you're earning $200,000 annually. Even if you spend $150,000, so even if you spend $200,000 for your MBA, uh, in, in a couple of years, again, it depends how much you save, et cetera, in a couple of years, you'll be able to repay the debt because most people would take substantial amount of that fee as, as a loan, a student loan. So in a couple of years, you'll be able to recover that. If you come to India, obviously salaries would be slightly lower and therefore that's a problem. So if you are getting an MBA from a US business school, in almost all cases, you should stay and live and work. You would want to do that in, a, in US or in a first world economy where the where the exchange rates are such that you are able to earn a lot more money and therefore able to pay, pay, pay out the student loan comfortably. If you want to live and work in India, then an IM degree is perfectly fine. So that becomes the primary factor. Live in India, then go for an IM. Don't think about US business schools. Unless of course you are from a family which is wealthy, you have money you can afford, then there is no question. Then, then absolutely the choice is very easy. One more thing to keep in mind is the brand. Now, like I said, even though brand for the US business schools, it's very strong and it's global brand, I would still not pay four to five times more. But one thing to, to certainly keep in mind is that in certain professions, in certain walks of life, the brand can become very useful and very, very powerful. As an example, let's say if you want to become a fund manager, you want to run your own, not immediately, maybe 10 years down the line, you want to raise your own VC fund, private equity fund. And for that, you need to reach out to people in the US and Silicon Valley or, or different fund managers or fund of funds. So these are people who are not from India. They are, these are big business people who live across the globe. They would be able to much more easily recognize a Wharton or a Stanford or a Kellogg brand than they would recognize an Indian IM brand. So there is certainly some advantage there, but like I said, it's less, it's not as important as, the, as whether you want to live and work in India versus in the US. One more thing uh, to remind you here is that even if you have a degree from an IM, it is not like you cannot get a job in the US. Some people might get directly, or if you work in uh, work somewhere for two, three years, and then maybe the same company may have uh, a unit outside, or you might just apply directly to some company in the US and you might get a job. It's not easy, obviously, it's, it's hard, but some people do, do certainly achieve that. So I know even in McKinsey, there were folks who went to IM. They worked in the India office and then later on they transferred to London or to US, some of the US offices. So it is possible to, to make that transition without having spent a ton of money for your MBA. Remember, if you are, wherever you're working, right now this money obviously seems a lot higher. Once you've worked for a couple of years and you've saved a lot of money, probably the, the difference, the, the amount of money you spend on the US MBA may not feel that much, but that's not a risk that you want to take going in. So in summary, if you want to live and work in India, an IM degree is absolutely fantastic. Don't think too much about it. But if either you can afford or you want to live and work in the US, then, and if you have the option of a US MBA, especially a top seven, top 10 business school, certainly go for it.
If you go to Chicago, you'll get to take a class with Professor Raghuram Rajan. If you go to Columbia, you might even have Nobel laureates. So you will have an experience which will be quite amazing. So both ways, I would say you can't go wrong. If you have those options, both are great options. The choice ultimately is yours. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you found it useful and enjoyable. If you did, I'll see you again soon in the next video. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.